Okay, so here I have my servo, and I've attached it to this pot right here. Everything is hooked up directly. And I don't know if you can hear it, but... There's very little jittering, very little noise, but there is some. I opted to add a low pass filter to the, both the pot and the PWM with uh, using capacitors and resistors, and it's slightly improved with the jitter. Sometimes when I move uh, the servo to a position, there's zero jitter. As it is right now, a as it is now, an angle of zero degrees corresponds to a three percent duty cycle. An angle of 180 degrees corresponds to a 12 percent duty cycle. So here we have our R2R DAC. And if we, uh, if we analyze each step here using a double equivalent circuit, then we'll see that the output voltage will be uh, governed by this equation. And because we have three different binary inputs, we know we're going to have two to the three different possible, uh, different possible outputs. So here we have a table listing all of those outputs and all of their, all of those inputs and all of their outputts. And because, because we have a three-bit system, we know that the VLSB will be uh, 5 divided by 8, or 0.65 volts. Uh, the DAC simulation with Circuit Lab. I'm going to show two different inputs. Here we have 0, 1, 0, and we'd expect that to be a output of 1.25 volts according to our calculations, and we can see that's exactly what we get. I'll demonstrate a different value, 0, 1, 1, and it's exactly as our calculations predicted, 3.75 out. So now we're going to model this up on our breadboard. Okay, here I'm going to demonstrate the R2R 3-bit DAC. I made it with 2R being a 1K resistor, and then R being two of those resistors in parallel. So here is uh, 111, and we're reading a fluctuating value of 4.37. Here is 011, we're reading 3.745. Very close again. Here is 101, we're reading 3.125. Very good. Here is 110. We're reading 1.85. These values are very close to the theoretical values. Potential error is not exact uh, resistor values, and also the fact that this output signal um, needs to go through the Arduino's own ADC. If we needed a smaller step size in the DAC output voltage for a particular application, as in if a, if a change of 0.625 volts was, uh, was too great a change, then we would simply have to increase the bits on our DAC. So right now there's three. Um, I mean, if we increase the bits to four bits, we would get, uh, yeah, to increase the step size, we basically need to decrease the uh, least significant bit voltage. So if we increase uh, just to four bits instead of three bit, we would get a VLSB of 0 0.3125. Now we're at 0, 1, 0, and now we're reading 1.235 volts. Okay, three, two, one. So here is my DAC uh, controlling my servo. So because it's a three-bit DAC, there's two to the three different positions my servo can be in. Uh, so I'm going to show those positions now. Uh, we'll show a few of them. So we can start by uh, the smallest increase, which is a, a increase of the VLSB by 0.625 volts. So that's a 100, and that changes uh, the orientation of the servo over just of the servo just slightly. Uh, the next highest we got 010. That's 1.25 volts. So there's eight different positions we can have. And now, this is at 2.5 volts. We're at 100 degrees, 102 degrees to be precise. It looks right, it's about halfway past 90 degrees. So obviously, because the potentiometer, potentiometer is continuous, we can have continuous values of our servo, but because the DAC here is discrete and that there's only two to the M different positions, uh, well, the potentiometer is more suited for precise control and uh, a digital input is better for the discrete control. If I needed a smaller step size in the angular position of my servo, I would definitely increase the number of bits in my DAC.